I'd like to welcome you to another session of tips and tricks. In this session, we're going to have a look at the hole command and we are going to jump from the hole command itself into the sketch environment where I'm going to show you how you can quickly equally space hole positionings with the aid of dimensions and driven dimensions. So I'll make a start. So I'm going to select the hole command from the modify panel. So when you open the hole command, it asks you to select a face or a start position for creating a hole. So I'm just going to select the face here. By doing that, it then gives us the option to jump into the sketch. So I'm going to jump straight into the sketch and you'll notice inside I have a point and a preview for where the hole will be placed based on the selection that I made before. So before I do anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull through some geometry. I'm going to do this using the construction line option. I'm then going to select project geometry and pick this face. I'm then going to right click, select OK to come out of the project geometry feature. I'm then going to create a line and I'm just going to place this line on this face and then just extend each side so that a coincident constraint is created on the projected lines that I brought through before. I'm then going to just very quickly place a dimension here because this will allow me to manipulate the positions in the y-axis should I need to and then use my geometrical constraint to place the point for the hole onto my construction line. I'd then like to ensure that I've got an offset. I'm going to call this dimension offset 1 which will be equal to 10 mil. Okay, so that's that first pole positioning fully constrained. I'm then going to select point from the create panel and just place another location for a hole onto my construction line. And I'm also going to create a dimension between the point and the end, but I want it to be the same as the original offset. So I'm going to select this dimension and as you can see, it's placed the offset one into that dimension which is set to 10 mil. I'm then going to select the point again and this time I'm just going to place a couple of points along this specific line. Now because I don't want it to end up using any of the tracking lines I'm just going to hold control and I'm going to place a few points there. I'm then going to constrain them using the coincident constraint to ensure that they are attached to my construction line that I placed before, like so. Now I've done that, I'm going to start to add some dimensions. So I'm going to place some more dimensions between the points. I'm just placing them so I can see them. Some of them are relatively close together. Okay. Now, when I place this last dimension in, I'm going to purposely over constrain my sketch. So notice that I get the warning telling me that I'm going to over constrain the sketch and it's asking me, do I want to create a driven dimension? In which case I'm going to accept it. So you'll notice then the driven dimension is created and it's got brackets inside there. And that means that I cannot physically change it because it's driven by the other dimensions. Okay, so the quick trick to evenly space these positions is to do the following. So I'm gonna pick the first dimension and I'm gonna use the second dimension as its reference. And you can see there it's pulled through the dimension name or the parameter name. And select OK. And I'm gonna do that for each of the dimensions that I created. So I select one dimension, pick the next. Then select the next dimension, oh, wrong one. Then select the next dimension and select the one after it. And I'm going to keep on doing this so you can then see that I've got an FX here, which is a function telling me that something else is driving that specific parameter or dimension. Let me keep on going. Okay, so we get to the last one. I'm going to select that dimension and pick the driven dimension, and I want to. I want you to have a look at what happens to the hole positions. As you can see there, they are equally spaced at 30 mil apart. It's 
bring these dimensions back so you can see which is nice so we're utilizing multiple dimensions and a driven dimension and by selecting it in the method that i showed you it will evenly space them if i was then to change my offset to say five mil notice that the spacings also update equally put that back to 10 and you can see that they all update again then i can jump back onto my hole into the command i can pick the size hole that i want i'm just going to leave it at this moment at three mil select ok and i have equally spaced holes with an offset of 10 from either side 